Hi, this is Bethany Johnston, and today we're going to talk about monitoring your rangelands and pastures to gain information that you can use to make management decisions. And a lot of that comes from taking pictures and then tying data with those pictures so we can, can go back and look at those and see what's really been going on in our pastures. So this is an example of some photo monitoring that a rancher did, and you can see up here in the upper right hand corner, sorry, left hand corner, um, there's some equipment there and this rancher actually used that to fill in the blowout. And you can see this is about five, 10 years later and you can see the fence line here. And then this is a recent picture, you can see the fence line here as well. So you can see just how much that blowout has filled in. And we like to say a picture is worth a thousand words. And you can see in this one, when, when they went to fill in this blowout, you know, who would have thought that in 20, 30 years it would have looked like that. So pictures are really helpful in seeing how our management decisions have impacted our grasslands. So some things to think about when you're going out to do some monitoring is we need to have reference, repeatability, and related data. So kind of the three R's. So for reference, what we will use is a perspective pole. So you can see here we have a pole marked in one foot increments with white and then black. And so we can see how tall the grass is. The other thing we can use when we look down is called a hoop or a plot frame. And so we can look down and see um, how, how much grass is in there, how tall it is, and that gives us a little bit of reference. The other thing we need is repeatability. So we need to be in the same spot every year so we can get pictures that are easy to compare. So here's a field marker that we actually use in the sand hills. It's just a piece of PVC pipe about 18 inches long that's been angled at the end. And because I live where it's sandy, we can just pound those right into the ground. Um, other field markers you could use are flat metal discs or if you have a GPS unit, those GPS units can get you fairly close and get good repeatability um, when you go out to take pictures. Other things to think about is when I take that picture, what do I need to remember in years to come? So what was the precipitation like? Did we receive hail? Um, was there defoliation because of grasshoppers? Uh, grazing records, how many animals, how many head is also helpful. Just things that will help you remember that year and what you did in that year. So these are some pictures that we took on a place and you can see we have our perspective pole out there and you'll notice it's taller in one picture and not the other and that's because when I took that picture I was zooming in and out. So try to, to use the same zoom every year and the same goes for when we look at those pictures looking down. So you can see here this is the exact same spot year after year. Pictures we want to take, a photo point is the, the bigger picture looking out. So you can see there's this point on the horizon and we want to try to line up every year with that point. And so this kind of gives us an idea of how tall the grass is, if there's any washouts, um, noxious weeds or cedar trees. And so we can look at that photo point, that big picture looking out and compare those years to years. The other key pictures that are helpful are photo plots. So these are the pictures looking down. And this tells us a lot of information. Um, what kind of uh, plant species do we have? Is the plant community changing? Is there too much bare soil? Um, just getting that looking down gives us an idea of what's out there and even sometimes how much. Usually when we take pictures, we'll take one picture looking out, that photo point, and then several looking down. So maybe four to six pictures looking down around that permanent field marker so we can get an idea of what our grass is looking like. So we did some photo monitoring before using a digital camera, downloading those pictures to our computer, and as a producer, I would not have done that. It was very time consuming. And so we came up with the idea, um, some educators and forage specialists at 
Nebraska Extension to have an app that would hopefully make that job of monitoring every year a little bit easier. So we developed Grass Snap, and you can see here that this is for the Apple and the Android version. And then we also have Grass Snap available um, for Android, so we release that one as well. And the nice thing about Grass Snap is it saves you a lot of time. You don't have to name the files, you can repeat. And if you're out doing monitoring, it takes a lot less equipment um, if you're able to get rid of some of that paperwork and instead replace it with an iPhone, an iPad, or an Android tablet or phone. These are some resources for you guys. So if you want to learn more about GrassSnap, you can go to the webpage at go.unl.edu slash GrassSnap. And I have user manuals on there, um, download instructions, so how do I get it from my smart device to my, my laptop or my computer, and there's some other links on there as well. Another helpful resource is NebGuide G2212, and this just has some tips and tricks on how to monitor, um, what do you want to measure, so am I worried about grass production, Am I worried about plant community shifts? Um, and then how do I go about doing that? So those are some helpful uh, links for you guys to follow as well. Now I have to tell you, um, when I went to develop GrassNap, I really didn't know what an app was or how to use it. And uh, my two-year-old daughter at the time taught me how to use my iPad. So I tried to make this program um, as simple as possible for those people out there that maybe aren't as good with a smartphone or a, a smart device. So these are just some features of GrassSnap. Once you go through the process and get data entered, it will sort by pasture name or transect and have albums. So you can see here all of my albums. And then when I click on a file, it will open up the pictures and the data for that pasture. Uh, there's also multiple years of data stored within those folders. So you can see here, if I clicked and opened up a folder for, for R40 here, you can see I have my pictures. I also have on my pictures uh, digitally stamped, so it's never going to get lost if your pictures get renamed, the pasture name, the date, the GPS location if you'd entered it, and the direction that you're looking. So that really is helpful if someone else decides to go monitor with these pictures later on. The other things we can do is tie in some data with those pictures. We have some grazing indexes in there for Nebraska. We have an apparent trend score for the NRCS Conservation Stewardship Program in there. And then there's also places to add comments. So, you know, what direction am I looking? Um, did the cows just come out? Did they just come in? And it helps us um, keep track of that data and ties it together with those photographs. The maps is also another feature that we have. And you can see on mine, I was kind of traveling across Nebraska, entering coordinates in as I went and, and doing some um, entering into GrassSnap. And so that's a nice feature just to kind of see where you've been and where you've monitored and you can zoom in on that. But this is my favorite one here. So this is a list view. So when I go out to find my pastures the next year, I have a GPS unit, and I can enter these coordinates into that GPS unit, and it will take me back to those sites. So I don't have to worry about forgetting that sheet back at home. Um, it's with me all the time. The one thing I will remind you guys is that GrassSnap uses decimal degrees. So make sure that your GPS unit is set in decimal degrees or you'll be thrown off um, on your coordinates when you go back to look for them. So this is kind of how GrassSnap is set up. If you haven't used it before, you're going to add a new transect or add a new pasture. And it's going to walk you through the steps. So first we're going to take a photo point looking out. And then once you've done that picture, it's going to ask for a photo plot looking down. You can add up to five photo plots, so you have some wiggle room to include pictures in there that you would like to have. 
then you can add a grazing index for either the Nebraska Sandhills or Western Nebraska Native Range. And um, we did not include one in there for smooth brome, um, but there is some information on grazing smooth brome or irrigated pastures. If nothing else, I would use the comment section. You can leave these blank, don't fill those in, but you can add comments in here that will help you remember data that's tied to that picture. We also have our parent trend score here if you're doing the CSP program. And so that way you can download those pictures and download the apparent trend scores. And um, all in one spot, I save mine to a CD and drop it off at the NRCS office. So ask your NRCS office how they'd like that data, um, but it saves you some, some printing expenses if you're able to give it to the office digitally. So let's say we've, we've entered our pastures for this year and we're coming back the next year. So we would use the button update existing. Those pastures are already in there. And then once I hit that button, it's going to come up with a list of names. So what's my pasture name? So I can go in there and say, okay, I'm going to go monitor the calving pasture. And it will remember your GPS coordinates and your original photo point. And that's going to be helpful uh, because of this overlay feature. So you can see here, this is my original photo point here. And then when I come back, I can use that overlay feature to line up exactly. So I'm trying to get these two to match up here. And then those pictures are really easy to compare from year to year. So that's a nice feature that we have included in GrassSnap. So I would encourage you guys to go out and monitor. Um, you know, maybe you need to work with someone to set up a monitoring system. But once you get it set up, it's pretty simple to repeat year after year. And you can do all sorts of, of monitoring. Um, you can do a real simple method or you can get more in depth. So go out there and hopefully you guys can find a system that works for you and helps you to get some good information on your place. Thank you.